Good morning, Algebra. One of the things I did for my students last year was make instructional videos periodically, and I've decided that I'm going to bring that back. I know there's been a lot of confusion about a lot of what we've been learning in class, trying to learn these new procedures. Um, so I thought this might give you a bit of an advantage. Uh, one of the things that we uh, have yet to cover, that we're going to need to cover, is rationalizing denominators. And uh, for whatever reason, mathematicians have decided that having a square root in the denominator is usually undesirable. So we've got a technique for dealing with that. And all we're going to do is multiply creatively by the number of 1. I want to get root 2 out of the denominator and get something else in its place in the numerator. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by root 2 over root 2. Now your instinct is going to be to cancel those, but that's not what we're going for here. Recall that the square root of any number is equivalent to that number raised to the one-half power. So by multiplying the denominator, root 2, by itself, root 2, I'm squaring it. What I've actually got here is 1 times root 2 over root 2 times root 2. And since the square root is raising to the 1 half power, well, anything times 1 is itself. So let's just leave the root 2 alone there on the top. But here I have 2 to the 1 half power times 2 to the 1 half power. And our power rule tells us that when we have the same base being multiplied together, we can add the exponents. 1 half plus 1 half is just 2. So I end up with the square root of 2 over 2. Now, this part right here is intermediary. It's what goes on behind the scenes. This multiplied by this needs to take you to this with as little of this written out as possible. So let's just do another example. You should see the pattern fairly soon and then we can move on to more complex examples. We've got 1 over root 3. We're going to multiply creatively by the number 1. Root 3 divided by root 3 is equivalent to 1 and now numerator times numerator denominator times denominator 1 times root 3 is root 3 root 3 times root 3 is the same as root 3 squared which simplifies to 3 without the root at all root 3 over 3 one more simple one without any intermediary work. 1 over root 5. I want simplified, so I'll multiply by root 5 over root 5. Whatever the denominator is, whatever the square root part of the de denominator, that's what we'll multiply as numerator and denominator. And that gives me root 5 over 5. So let's increase the complexity slightly. Let's say I've got 2 over root 3. Well, I don't want that root 3 to be in the denominator, so I multiply by root 3 over root 3. 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is just 3. Let's increase the complexity a little more. Let's say I have 2 root 5 over root 6. Well, I don't want that root 6. I don't really need to worry about the root 5 just yet. Right now, all I'm going to do is handle the root 6 by multiplying both numerator and denominator by root 6 over root 6. Well, root 6 times root 6 is going to simplify to just 6. But here in the numerator, we've got a little bit of work to do. Root 5 times root 6 is root 30. The 2 comes along for the ride. 
that's 2 root 30. But root 30 can be simplified. Actually, no, it can't. There are no perfect square factors inside of root 30 because its prime factorization is 2 times 3 times 5. So let's do an example where we will need to simplify at the end. Say we have 7 root 10 divided by root 5. We want to get rid of the root 5 on the bottom so we multiply top and bottom by root 5 over root 5. Create a version of the number 1. Root 5 divided by root 5 is equal to 1. So we don't change the value, we just change the way the expression looks. Root 5 times root 5 on the bottom is just 5. Or if you prefer, it's square root of 25. But that's going to simplify to 5. On top, we have 7 times root 50 because 10 times 5 is 50. And now you can really see why the denominator turns out the way it does. 5 times 5 is 25, but they're both underneath the square root. So root 5 times root 5 is root 25, and root 25 is just 5. So this is what goes on behind the scenes, but mentally, or when you write it out, you really just want to know root 5 times root 5 is just 5. Now what about this root 50? Well we know that that simplifies we know that 50 simplifies to 2 and 25 and 25 simplifies to 5 and 5 there's our double which means we can pull a 5 out of this root 50 for 7 times 5 times root 2 all over 5 and then we simplify. You can multiply 7 times 5 to get 35 and then divide by 5 to get back to 7 or you could just cancel the common factors for a final answer of 7 root 2. And you've got to admit that 7 root 2 is nicer, neater, easier to look at than 7 root 10 over root 5.